Live from Chicago, Illinois, it's the Othi Schwering Show. <laughs> Featuring tonight's special guest from Fox's Laughs, Jeffrey R. Curie. <laughs> Plus, we'll lazily replay an old segment and learn about bees. And now, he'd be the mayor of Chicago, but he don't do ballet. Otholomew Schwering! Hello! Oh, yes! Hello! Welcome to the O.D. Schwering Show. How you doing tonight? Right, right, right. I don't know what's wrong with me. I wear Ninja Turtle t-shirts to take my pregnant wife out for, for dinner, yet I dress up to come to my living room. It's, it's weird. Beijing is in the news. You guys hear about this? Um, Beijing has just been announced as the location of the 2022 Winter Olympics. All right, it's very cool for them. Um, it makes sense. I think, I think it should be in the then capital of the People's Republic of Earth. <laughs> Watch out, America. <laughs> Watch out. The, um, coincidentally, the um, number one event at the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics, iPhone factory diving. <laughs> iPhone factory diving. Oh, no. Yikes. I just got that one. Oh. <laughs> Cecil the lion. Oh, Cecil the lion's in the news. Do you have anything about Cecil? Yeah. The Zimbabwean um, king of the jungle who was um, lured out of a um, protected area by, by an American dentist um, and then allegedly murdered. Here, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. I allegedly because you know I can imagine it going a different way possibly right sure right right you know you get this this American this proud American is walking along in Zimbabwe and he um he sees a, a lion with a large incisor <laughs> stuck in its paw so he's extracting it he's extracting the the tooth and then things go sideways also a possibility so let's just withhold judgment <laughs> is what I'm saying I think there's a fable about that. I don't know. Um, an Ohio man is spending currently spending two days in in jail because he hopped the fence at the Columbus Zoo, and he um, he lured a, he lured two cougars over. Here, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. And he um he and he petted them. They were very you know gentle and everything. Um, uh, I think we should give the guy a break. Who amongst us? hasn't petted a cougar or two. Uh-huh. Hello. Free Joshua. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. You guys techies? Anybody you guys you like, like your smartphone? Who here has a smartphone? Yeah, all, all, the whole audience has a smartphone. Yeah. Sign of the times. Um, the iPhone 7 was announced. A lot, of, a lot of stuff coming with the iPhone 7. The weird thing was, I guess not so weird, the, um, the iPhone 7 is only going to come in one color. Um, minion yellow. Um. <laughs> and I'll leave you guys with this. We have a lot of show to get to. Uh, um, Cosby, Bill Cosby. You guys see the cover of the magazine with all, the, oh, yeah. all his victims? Yeah. That's horrible. But I'm going to take Cosby down another notch with my classic, famous impression. You guys like impressions? Um, this is my impression of Roger Rabbit doing an impression of Bill Cosby as Cliff Huxtable. You guys got that? Yeah. All right, Roger Rabbit doing an impression of Bill Cosby as Dr. Cliff Huxtable. <laughs> Please, Theo! <laughs> we have an amazing show, and we're going to start right now. <laughs> this is part of it. <laughs>
know Jim's mom was going to be here. Actually, I'm from Chicago because... To Chicago. Boy, are your arms tired? No, I'm fine. Because I've been watching the show the last couple of months, and you've been expressing some apprehension and concern about uh, the baby that will be arriving in November. And I wanted to bring you a couple of things that I thought might help to ease your mind. <laughs> and the first of these is something that basically tells you everything you need to know about being a parent. Whoa. And this is it right here. It is a towel <laughs> for you that says, don't panic. Oh. Words to wow. live by. Words to live by. Thank you. You're very welcome. And because every child needs. <laughs> I brought you a couple of nice. lenses. Nice. Uh, which, um, Every child. Have. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. And Can we embrace? Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much, Jim's mom. You're very welcome. Awesome. Thank you. Wow. Surprise. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, Jim, we good to go? Oh, yeah, of course we're good to That's go. That's the clamps. Yes. Uh, I thought, I, just so you know, Othi, that. That has been in that has been in playing for a while now. <laughs> Hi everybody. This is Jim. You may remember me from a couple minutes ago, but uh, yeah, I just thought uh, you could use a couple of supplies, and my mom is all into the crafting and sewing and embroidery and making cool things like that. Of both these so. get rich quick tips. <laughs> <laughs> it would work better in 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 um, rehearsal. Othi's get rich quick tips. Rehearsal? Rehearsal? What are you talking about rehearsal? First up, we got um, this is a simple one. Everybody does this. Make lemonade for free by adding sugar and lemon slices to tap water. <laughs> Pretty simple thing to do. Saves you money. Don't spend money on that expensive soda pot. Oh yes, that's a good one. Next up, forget going to spin class. Hop on a locked up divvy and pedal your. That's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> hop on a hop on a locked up divvy. Hop on a locked up divvy and pedal your heart out instead of going to spin yeah. class. Yeah, Another and if you can do it upside down, then you are more badass than anybody in a spin class. Another way it helps the helps circulation. Another way to save money. Um, and then, along those same lines, don't waste your hard-earned dough on a gym membership. Live weights for free in the dumbbell aisle of your local Target. <laughs> that's what I do. Um, and then this is one of my favorite tips that I use every day, especially before a show. <laughs> Subscribe to enough magazines and never buy cologne again. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, um, never leave your house. Wait, we're going to save money. That's been Othi's Get Rich Quick Tips. Other way, it's reversed. <laughs> oh God. Oh, don't don't bring him into this. He's not concerned about late night talk. <laughs> My first guest tonight <laughs> is a Laugh Factory regular and has appeared on Fox's Laughs. Jeffrey Arcuri, everybody. Hey! Damn it! Hey, man. Welcome, welcome. welcome. Hello. How's it going? Great, man. How are you? Now we've met before. Yes, we have. I think at Four Trays Open Mic. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Pretty, pretty sure you went on a cigarette break during my set. I might have done that. I do that. I did that a lot. You still a smoker? Yeah, unfortunately. One of those once a smoker, always a smoker when the chips are down type of thing. Or you do it like based on your emotion? Uh, no, it's just it's been a regular thing. I, I monitor it. I don't do it that much, but it's still definitely a, a crushing habit. Or yeah, for sure. So. Okay. Fair enough. It's not great. So other than that, we didn't like hang out or pal around. What? So I don't know you. Not that well, I guess. No, no, no. no. Um, so, what? You are you from Chicago? No, originally no. I'm from Michigan. I started comedy in Michigan. I grew up in New York, but I started comedy in Michigan. Okay. And then I moved, after doing comedy for two years, I moved to Chicago. Okay. And I've been here for like three and a half, almost four years. All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, now I understand. <laughs> Wait, where, where in Michigan are you from? Oh, no, that thing? That thing. Is that annoying? You're like this? Right there? Is that Saginaw? Nope. Lansing? It's, uh, I can just say it. Coldwater? Uh, it's uh, <laughs> Macomb County, like just north of Detroit. Like, you know the movie Eight Mile? Yeah. I lived You're... on 24 Mile. Okay. So, like, to define a suburb of Detroit. Is that more affluent? 
Uh, than Eight Mile. Than it's, Eight Mile. It's twenty. Yeah, it's, it's it's much more affluent than Eight Mile. It's twenty four it? mile. It's three times better than Eight Mile. Obviously. Ah, yeah. there it is. That's true. Yeah, okay, that is true. It's but, exactly three times better. Is that was that some kind of weird coded language I use? Is that like weird to use? Like affluent? Does that mean? No, 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 not I, at all. I was saying. Well, you're saying anywhere from Detroit is going to be more affluent. The further away you go away from the Detroit, okay. it's the better it's going to be. Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, now this is the thing I, you know, I'm always trying to find things in common here. Like you're out of stuff. I'm out of stuff. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm all out of stuff. Um, try, you know, I invite these comics based on reputation. Okay. Over to, over to the crib. Sure. That I haven't met before, so I'm always trying to find connections, right? Okay. Like the last time I did a show, it was you know you know Kristen Toomey, right? Yeah. Very and well. I was like, oh, I was all I was all jazzed up because because I thought her husband's name was last name was Rhodes. Right? Yeah. Because my wife's last name was Rhodes. We just got to change it to DMV. Okay. Um, and it was her gay best friend. Yes. So I'm always trying to, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is I'm, I'm like searching and seeking and reaching out and grabbing and trying to like find a connection in this lonely, sad world. Right? Sure, sure. What so kind of connection I see that you, um, you have, or I don't know if you once were or are now a pizza delivery driver. I've delivered pizza in my day. Uh, no, yeah, I did that. Uh, Shoot, it would have been like 10 years ago. Okay, uh, that's about for me too. But. Yeah, so that's all. Well, I, I, I had delivered pizzas uh, for the same place for a few years, for a couple of years. And I wasn't even supposed to be. I was like 16. I was okay. under the age of like, I, 18. I honestly up. delivered pizza at 16. It was like the really? owners, the owners, yeah, Bronco. Yeah, whatever, dude. Yeah, yeah, right. And so that's awesome. what happened. I, was, I delivered pizzas for them. And then I delivered pizzas to this dude uh, every week. He ordered, a, on Tuesdays, he'd get a 12-inch Pepperoni pizza with okay. half black olives and a large order of cheesy bread. Okay, every week, no matter what, for two same, years. Okay. Same dude, same. same house, same kids. Same trailer. Every week. No, no, nice house. Nice like house. it was nice. Oh, yeah. Tip me four bucks every time. It wasn't a bad delivery. Ten years ago, four buck tip was right. That was like ninety-five dollars nowadays. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I used to deliver to them, and then one day his wife went missing. And there was all of the CNN and all that stuff. His name was Stephen Grant. His wife went missing. <laughs> Did he stop ordering cheesy bread at some point along there? Here's that the deal. Was for her. Here's what happened. Once his wife went missing and the accusations came out that he might have done it, he ordered another pizza from us. <laughs> and the order was for a 12-inch pepperoni pizza, no black olives, as opposed to half black that olives. Her, oh. So oh. I was like, he's finally getting it in his way, you know? <laughs> And I delivered it. The manager went with me because he's like, oh, things are crazy. I delivered him the pizza. I His garage was open, so I go in through there. I put the, the pizza on top of like a freezer, and then he opens the door, and there's his two kids that I knew, and his mom was there, and I met her before, and delivered the pizza. I leave. He's on the phone. I leave, and the next morning, like 6 a.m., they found his wife's chopped up body on the freezer. That you put the pizza oh on the next day. Yeah, the next day. Oh, wow. He had, he had gotten it the night before, and because he had cut her up and buried her, because he killed but her. Is it? Aren't some things better the next day? Cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on. That's Upside. pretty good. That's pretty good. That's good night, bad. everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh, we're. Gonna, all right. Is that real? No. Okay. <laughs> Nothing's real on so, this show. Nothing is real on this show. Slouching. Nothing's, Short guy nothing's guy. real but my dangling. delusions. I'm dangling. Um, your, <laughs> your apartment caught fire. I understand that your apartment caught yeah, fire. Let's just pretty, get through all the, all the things. We're going to well. talk about comedy after that. Sure, sure. No, I'm, a, I'm, I'm um, what's the guy's name? What's the guy from Comics Unleashed? I'm Byron Allen. I'm Byron Allen. Okay. That's all I got tonight. Sure. All right, then I New set, set up. up. Go, I'm not. Next just, thing you know, like you have to go into it. <laughs> I'm discombobulated. Sure. Um, uh, yeah, my apartment caught fire. That was insane. This is actually. more recently. Yeah, I'm not gonna say like we had to leave because 100% because of the fire, okay. but it was definitely like in a T chart somewhere that the landlord was like for sure. We had a fire. What happened was we were all watching. We were up late. We were drinking. We were smoking. And we were watching. Smoking. Uh, you know all sorts of things. Okay. Uh, no, I hate ma clothes. Mainly just yeah. <laughs> And we were watching uh, Honey, I Shrunk with the Kids with a bunch of me, my two roommates, and all of our girlfriends okay. at the time. And we were watching that, and then all of a sudden, uh, the, the we saw like fire trucks outside, and my buddy was like, I smell something. And I was like, oh my god. And I ran out to our back porch, and there was just this firefighter on our back third story uh, walk up back porch just spraying water on our porch because it was on fire. He turns it off after it's done, and he goes, Oh, hey, 
Like he just said, hey. <laughs> like as if he was like owning a coffee shop. Like, oh, good to see you again. And okay. I was like, hey. And I knew he was like a firefighter because he had the hose in, in the yellow outfit. And you recognize him from the calendar. Right, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and he's like, uh, are you grilling up here? And I'm like, no, we were watching Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Like, those two things are no, mutually we're exclusive. Up here. Yeah, like, those two things are mutually exclusive. Like, yeah. you can't mix meat and Moranis. You know what I mean? Like, you <laughs> what are you talking about? So he's like, oh, he's like, oh, well, it might have been a cigarette. Do you think it was a cigarette and a beer can? And I was like, no, because that's probably what <laughs> it was. He's trying to tie you to it. He's like, it, maybe it was a, right. so that's what a I was marble like, yeah. light and a, a yeah. Coors banquet beer? Yeah, so that's why I was like, no, because for sure that's what happened. And yeah. uh, then he, uh, a cop comes up, and here's the deal. I don't, when cops approach you, I never know how to interact with a cop. Yeah. I've never known how to interact with a cop, especially if I don't know if I did something wrong or not. You know what I mean? Like, if they're coming toward you, so I was just like, I just go, like that. As he's walking yeah. up, my, my whole burnt porch, yeah. I'm like, what are you gonna do? And he's like, yeah. what are you guys grilling? And I'm like, are you guys hungry? Why do you keep asking if we're grilling up here? I found approaching cops, um, no matter what your state is, how you're dressed, who you are, where you come from, if you have an ice cream cone, like a waffle cone, yeah. like a three stacker, and you're just like licking it casually and um, asking them, like, uh, what's going on? They won't, they, they'll, they won't mess with you. You're not, if you have an ice cream cone, I had no ice cream at home. I okay. wish I would have known. I would have taken that tip. I just opened the door like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> this is my place. It's on fire right now. But then, uh, yeah, he, he ended up letting us go because he goes, is there anything you need to tell me right now? And I was like, no, because like I couldn't afford to say lawyer. You know what yeah. I mean? So I was just like, no. And then he left. And as I was walking back in, I saw... All, both my roommates and all of their girlfriends, including mine, against the window, looking at our conversation. It was like a little rascal's poster, just <laughs> against it like that. And I was like, you guys were staring the whole time, and then nothing ever happened. We just moved out. They just asked us to leave two months later. So, right. so besides um, murderers and, yeah. and, and fires, sure. Why did you get into comedy? What's the what's the deal? Is, oh, that, what, is that kind of stuff? If you had a rough life, I don't know. You don't no, think you not had a at all. Life? I got into comedy. I sold a cell phone to a comedian. And I was in cell phone sales. Oh, time. I and think I was imagining like on the street, like it. Hey, yeah, just like hey, you want a cell phone, phone kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Untraceable. No, he, he just I sold the cell phone to him, and then he, uh, I asked him how to get into comedy. He told me to take a class. I took a class, went to, into a competition. Three weeks into the class, got third place, and then just from there on out, went up as much as I could from there. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, we're looking forward to seeing the fruits of that later. Sure. Yeah. Four. We got a whiskey back. Expect since we've been expecting. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Um, it's been a busy month, so we're gonna um, check out a video from Othi Show Past when I went and learned all about bees. Now you can as well. Hey, it's Othi Schwering in beautiful Jefferson Park. We're meeting up with my good friend Mark Warren Brown today to do some beekeeping. Come on. All right now, Mark, what do you what do you got there? So this is powdered sugar and warm water into a sugar supplement solution, which is natural, and uh, it's in a lid with perforated holes. What does that do differently than the molasses gel you already put in your hive? Ah, well, the bees need pollen from the pollen patty, and they also need sugar water. So this slides into the entrance of the beehive and then charges them up so that they're really strong going into the fall and then winter. So. Are you afraid, could this keep them from going out and being um, exploratory and getting their own? Is that like a, is that doing the work for them? Yeah, well, Let's I mean... Let's talk about entitlements it's really like, quick. It's like food stamps for bees. <laughs> 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 it's just to, you know, just give them a little something to help them along. Because it's getting colder and uh, they still have more space to expand into. So I want them to focus on internal hive health and like building the structure inside the hive. Um, they've already done a lot of pollinating, a lot of exploring of the community gardens in Jefferson Park, so. I walked to my local 7-Eleven every day to get um, a sharing size Starburst, and these bees are just getting it delivered to them. So I just gotta load up the smoker fuel. Smoke makes them think about death it creates a response in them that their hive is dying, that the hive is on fire. 
So they start to become very docile and they start eating their honey and they think about like, okay, I'm gonna die. This is the death of the hive. So they become very passive. Um, so when they get agitated or they start flying around me, if they like detect like, hey, you've got our hive taken apart, you're an intruder, oh, giant monkey that. mammal. So <laughs> this is gonna docile them up. This is not gonna keep them away, but it's gonna docile them up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if they start like flying around you like the guard bees, so be aware that we I, mammals. I think I have this hookah food. flavor. <laughs> This is the Lovejoy Urban Beehive. Uh, both the, uh, so there's a flight path here in front of. Should I not be riding? Should I not be directly in front you of that? You are in, yeah. Okay, so this... you better clear the air. Space. <laughs> and Jim, you're okay because you see how the bees are coming and going in uh -huh. this channel right by the entrance of the hive. This is their flight path to go up and over. So we're just going to stay out of that area, and then they'll go about their business. And bees are kind of like the board collective from Star Trek. Like, they'll ignore us until they consider us a threat. Okay. So you'll open, after I initially uh, open the hive, you'll notice that, like, they'll just keep going about their business. And then the sexiest one will leave the collective, wear a skin sight one piece, and, um... And be friends with Captain Jane. There you go. So, uh, I'm gonna... Use a smoker just around the edges, just to let them know that I'm coming in. I was fully capable of doing that, so. Okay. So, from here, uh, we can see that the bees are busy. Coming. What kind of bee is this? Is it a typical honeybee? Is there such thing as a typical honeybee? Um, there's not. The original honeybees were Italian honeybees. Okay. Um, a lot of them have been Russianized or Africanized. I heard about those back Meaning, in the day. That yeah, was a big thing. They're bred with more aggressive bees so that they can better defend their turf and they produce more. But they're okay. not very nice bees. These are? Um, no, these no. are from Georgia and we've introduced a queen from Lake County. Do you know what, um, hey Mark, you know what um, kind of bee is President Obama's favorite? What? Drones. <laughs> Up top. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> so I'm going to open up the inner cover, reach in with my frame grabber, pull out a frame, and then we can all look at these up close and personal and what they're doing. Are there regulations or rules that um, govern urban beekeeping? Yeah, there's a permit right behind you. Okay, let's get a shot of that. Get a shot of the permit. Yes. This is all completely legal and not just people screwing with bugs. <laughs> <laughs> I beekeep in full compliance. Bees actually aren't a bug, Jim. Are, are they a bug? Are they a bug, Othi? <laughs> I don't know. They're a bug and beyond. All right, so now put some smoke Oh, in shit. There. Oh, crap. <laughs> Sorry. If we all die, this is Ozzy's oh. fault. It's okay. I got it's all for the pets. greater glory of my show. It's all to save show. the bees. Oh, yeah, the bees, yeah. Save the bees. Yeah, and save the bees. And Ozzy's show. <laughs> it's that, my friends. Supreme bees. Awesome. Now, where it's darker on the combs, that's where honey's forming mm -hmm. or collecting there. Like where it's like more tan yeah. there. So you see, over on this side, they're filling it with honey. Um, so the darker combs have been used a couple times. So they've already eaten all the honey that was in here. Did they create those combs, or is that artificial? They build it. Okay. Yeah, I have a plastic foundation on there to give them something to start off with. So you, that's, that's you're being real. You're being yeah, serious. Okay. For sure. But then they build this wax on top. I'm not sure this is smoking anymore. Oh, that's okay. You're good. It, but I'm gonna save it for them. So what's kind of like just laying a base for future future honey making endeavors right now? Yeah, it, it's really. I'm gonna take off uh, this top box and I'll pull a frame for the second box. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look at that. Bees in the trap. Bees in the trap. Oh my gosh, that, that has a lot of combs. Aft that helps them. It's like Downton Abbey. Yeah, so they're working on some honey there. You can see there's a little bit of different shape. Comb in the frames. Yeah, but that's really good to see um, baby bees in here because I know the queen's still in here and she's laying eggs. Okay. And that's good. They're going to keep rebuilding the population. Is there a specific spot where the queen is in within the hive typically? Yeah. Or? yeah, I'd have to pull out maybe all these frames to find her. 
What do you think about this queen thing, Rocky? I mean, is it just like subjugating males and like a royalty without any king? Um, you know, I've always been a staunch supporter of the matriarchy, you know? I believe in the divine maternal, all that stuff, so I'm okay with it. You guys want to try some honey? Put flat. Oh boy. <laughs> How is it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Is it, like it? Yeah, is it more good. potent than what you get in stores? I mean, it's obviously unpasteurized. Is there any safety concerns yeah. or health issues with it? No, honey's really safe. The bees keep it really yeah. clean. What is that about honey that is unsafe for like one year olds? Oh, yeah, it does contain like small amounts of naturally occurring bacteria that okay. like most everyone's immune system just handles. Except for infants. Except for infants, because okay. they don't have a fully developed immune system. So, You want to try some, Mothy? Definitely. Uh, this, this one? That's been there, yeah. Right. You like it? Yeah. Maybe we'll the store and get a jar of honey for you. be your snack of choice. I only had some Cheerios on me. That was good stuff. Here, you want, you want again? You want some more? Yeah, hit me again. You deserve it, man. I have a bunch of empty Gerber containers, you know, baby food containers in my car. If I go get you a few, when can I come back and pick them up full of that good stuff? See, plus, man, as soon as I start accepting money for it, like the zoning department's going to be on me. People are going to want me to collect sales tax. I'll have these, you know, I'll have to get a three compartment sink and a sanitizer. <laughs> yeah, and then the Department of Health wants in on it. And, uh, so this is more for the bees. It's to save the bees. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's commendable. Free honey to save the bees. Get in on this a little bit. <sighs> you ready for this? It's pure milk chocolate. Are you ready for this? It's smooth and delicious. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you can see them at the Laugh Factory every Wednesday for the social takeover. Please give it up for Mr. Jeffrey R. Curie! What was that? Coaster, please. Coaster, please? You got it. <laughs> Listen, already a heckle uh, up front. We got candles. That's nice. I'm going to use this as a mic to make it easier for me. <laughs> I'm used to that. I'll do that for a minute. Why not? I've, uh, I've had a weird few weeks the past few weeks. Uh, three weeks ago, me and my girlfriend of a year and a half broke up because I found out she was cheating on me for a few oh. weeks with someone else, which sucked. Because, like, I really didn't want her to do that. You know I mean? <laughs> that was bad. Good news is, though, me and my mom are back together, so that's real nice. <laughs> we're, we're talking again. I love my mom. I love my mom, especially after a breakup, because a mom just knows, and they know how to really just recite idioms to you to make you feel better, you know? Like, everything happens for a reason. <laughs> Take it day by day. Don't look next week day by day. <laughs> My favorite was when I was growing up, but I was a fat 14-year-old. My mom, I don't know, I'm putting this back. <laughs> my favorite was when I, I was 14, my mom uh, told me, because uh, I wasn't confident, she told me, she goes, uh, you know, if I was your age, I'd date you. <laughs> and, like, I was like, if there was time travel, Ma, I don't think they're going to let people use it for shit like that at all. You know what I mean? Like, I think they're going to regulate it a little bit on top of that. That was great, though. My mom's amazing. She called me today because it had been a day, so she wanted to check in. She called me to tell me that after 62 years of life, she's become, she thinks, gluten intolerant. <laughs> Which, like, I yell, I was like, no, there's no way. Because she's a devout Christian woman from Queens, New York. And I don't know how much you guys know about Jesus, but, like, bread is most of them. So I don't know how she can accept Jesus as her Lord and Savior if her body rejects him as a snack. I feel like that's a little bit hypocritical. Like, she can't, you can't take a cracker for Jesus. Like, you can't. I got a couple more Jesus things. I like to talk about them. Like, they're, they're fun to me. Like, my mom, when I was in college, I found out that Jesus Christ was most likely around five feet tall during his reign or whatever. And... <laughs> I told my mom that and she flipped out. She's like, no, don't say that ever again. No, you want to go to hell? That's already go to hell. She and Jesus Christ didn't have someone. It's blasphemy. Don't believe it. And I'm like, really? That's 
the part of the story of Jesus Christ that you draw the line in the sand and walk with one foot print away, like that's the part right there. Like she's at a party, like yeah, Jesus Christ turning water into wine, that's cool. But wait a second, is that Jesus sharing a hug comfortably with Danny DeVito? I can't accept that at all. No, and that's insane to me. I want to do one more Jesus thing, just because I've, I've. It's, it's funny to me that he. What was his big thing? Water into wine, right? He turned water a valuable, scarce resource at the time, into wine, which was fun. <laughs> he turned something everyone needed into some hip shit at the time. That's all he really kind of did. Like, that's Jesus coming back now and being like, hey guys, I took all your jobs and turned them into barcades. I'm 2015, <laughs> Jesus. Like, no way, dude. Don't tell me that. I don't know. I made a mistake after we broke up, too. I called my ex-girlfriend at 2 a.m. and asked to come over, and I did, I went over. And then we like just talked for like four hours, and it was just like not what I thought we were gonna do. <laughs> I didn't think it was that. Good news was though, like she, uh, she, ended up, she ended up getting like a bunch of new tattoos and nipple rings. So she, well, a bunch of new tattoos, just two nipple rings. She didn't get like a bunch of new nipple rings across the board. Just the standard amount. And I went and she showed me that she showed me her nipple rings and she's like, look at that, isn't that fun? I'm like, sure, I guess. Like I don't I don't care. I've never cared ever. I've never once lifted up the shirt of a girl and been like, ugh, plain? Get the fuck out of here. Plain? Really? Are you serious? Plain? Yes. <laughs> I don't know, she had a bunch of tattoos. I have an idea for a tattoo, I wanna get one. I wanna throw you guys an idea real quick. Is that cool? Okay. I wanna get a cross <laughs> right there. Underneath it, I wanna get my dad's name. Underneath that, I wanna get 1956-2015, uh, just to see the look on his face. I feel like that. <laughs> Right? Like, he'll laugh or take more vitamins or whatever. Like, I think it'd be fine. Yeah, my, my point is, like, get something fun. Don't get something sad. Or get, get something interesting. Because tattoos used to mean so much more. And they used to be so much more intimidating than they are now. Like, 30 years ago, you saw a dude covered in tattoos. He made you nervous. Now, if you see a dude covered in tattoos, he makes you lattes. Like, he's a way nicer guy. He's so much nicer. He used to be a biker. And now he's a cyclist. Careful, share the road, it's everyone's road. I hate, I ride a bicycle in the city. Do you guys ever ride a bike? No, here, I love it, I love it so much. But I had, I stopped a few months ago because I had like, I found this out, that when you ride a bike in Chicago, sometimes if you lock it up outside, people will just take pieces of it. That's what happens. They'll just take whatever they need for their bike off yours for theirs. I don't know what it is, but I had both my bike tires stolen off my bicycle in like 15 minutes. And first of all, I didn't know they came off. So that was a real surprise for me when I parked my shit downtown for 10 minutes, went inside, came back out, looked at my bike, and I'm like, okay, that is not all of it at all. That is 80% of a bike gone right there. And I didn't know what to do when I saw that. So I called the police. <laughs> I called a cop. I called 911. That was my first reaction. It was to call 911. And I called the cops and I was like, both my bike tires were stolen. And he's like, oh man. Oh, I guess you got to buy new bike tires. And that was the end of that because they don't care about that. So I just had to carry my bike frame. You have to unlock. <laughs> the frame and ca I carried over my shoulder like an asshole, just walking six blocks with just a frame of a bike, no tires, the chains hanging down. Like just like, oh yeah, I lost the triathlon and they take both your tires, that's what happens. <laughs> and I'm walking and I, and I was thinking to myself, what if I see that guy with my bike tires? Like what if I see him running away? I, like you'd chase him, that'd be your first reaction is to chase him down. But then think about how that would be perceived. Because if you saw a dude with two bike tires, just one in each hand, like a messed up transformer, just trying to get it, like just sprinting, <laughs> just booking it, just as hard as he can, followed by me behind him, 
with the rest of it. Just like, because if I saw that, my first reaction wouldn't be, oh, that guy must have stolen that guy's bike tires. I wouldn't think that. My first reaction would be, oh, look at those two guys. We're super excited to build that bike together. Look for them. They must be friends. They have all the parts for it. Like, that's your first, I don't know. That's your first reaction to it, I think. I don't mind. I don't mind living in in, in Chicago. I'm gonna talk a little bit of smack about my ex girlfriend for a minute because we had issues. <laughs> uh, what is, is it? The, what I said or the word smack specifically? Because I haven't said that phrase uh, ever in my entire life. <laughs> talk a little bit of smack. <laughs> Clap if you agree <laughs> that if it's your birthday, your significant other should have you should have sex. Right. I agree. But I'll say this, don't assume that that's all you need to get that person for their birthday. <laughs> like, it, didn't even, it wasn't even me, it was her. Our birthdays were 10 days apart. On her birthday, I got her a stereo system, it was like 200 bucks, and then I got her 12 dozen roses, or I'm sorry, 12, 12 <laughs> Not like, what's 12 times 12? Not that amount of roses. It's but 12, gross. how much is it? A gross. A gross? No. A dozen, 12 dozen, times 12. Dozen, dozen, dozen. Is it, yeah, is a gross. gross. A gross? Is that a number? Yeah. A gross? A gross. You just make a, that's not, what is 12 times 12? 144. 144. It's that's gross. two different words. Yeah. Uh, 12 roses I made out of cardboard paper and I put, and I back layered them with a one, a different reason why I loved her on each one of them. I oh. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Like get the chills. I think we all have chills. I know. Yeah. And so that's what I got her. On my birthday, 10 days later, she bought me lingerie that fit her better <laughs> put it on and it's just like are you ready for your birthday present and i was like yeah and then we started kissing and we started having sex and i was like oh man this is an awesome thing to give me like before you give me my birthday present like, wow, there's so much more to come you know what i mean and she's at the end of it was just like oh no well happy birthday and i'm like that's bullshit kind of a little bit because i asked for an ipod doc to put my iphone into and that was not intended to be a euphemism <laughs> for anything else but that like just straight up just charge my phone and listen to some spotify you know we had a lot of problems though like i we were very i was very honest with her I was honest with her like 99.9% .9 of the time, which is as good as Lysol, so don't even right now. <laughs> it's not a bad statistic. The reason I say that is because there's movies on the internet and sometimes, like, whoops, I saw one. Sorry. <laughs> you asked me about my day, I'm going to leave that shit out and that's the one percent I'm not going to bring it up. And I think that's stupid because it causes issues when you can't communicate about that type of stuff, sexuality specifically. Like, I'll give you an example. Me and her were watching a YouTube video of three old ladies reacting to the Kim Kardashian sex tape. And it was very, very, very older women just like, oh my goodness. It was a viral video. It was very, very funny. But at the end of the video, my girlfriend was like, I've never seen the real sex tape. And I was just like, oh, I've never even heard of it. So, who's, who's this person? And she's like, well, let's look it up on your computer. Look it up on your computer right now. So then I just sit in front of my keyboard like a 97-year-old man that's just never heard of porn before. Just like, hmm, I guess you gotta pay for it on iTunes? I don't know how this works. How do you spell, how do you spell porn? Like popcorn without the opka in the middle? I don't know. And she's like, don't be stupid, Google it. So I Googled Kim Kardashian sex tape. And there it was. In big old purple letters. I hope, I think some of you are more familiar with Google. <laughs> and I'll explain what that means. When you're perusing Google and shit pops up in purple, that means you've been here before. <laughs> Welcome back. Come on in. Who's that, your girlfriend? Let's show her some of this shit, huh? Look at that one. Remember that one? That one's weird. You watched it nine times. That's a lot of times. I didn't know what to do. I just clicked on it and I was still logged in, which is so much worse to deal with. I just got my light. <laughs> it was a long haired dude going. That's all I had. There's three minutes left, if you guys didn't know. I've got a couple. I, I've got uh, one, long, one long thing or three stupid things? Very quickly. 
Okay. So here's the deal. I started dating. <laughs> I get it. No, no, no. It's, it's not. It's, it's exactly three minutes. So no worries. I started dating again, and my friend tried to set me up on a date. Uh, he's a comedian, and he set me up on a date with a girl, and he's like, you need to go out with her. I'm like, I, okay. I ended up canceling because I don't like getting set up on dates because I don't like when you get set up on a date, and then you meet that person and you don't like them then you have to report back to your friend and be like your friend's weird like that's not don't hang out with them are you serious like they like model airplanes you know what I mean like weird 30 year old stuff and <laughs> it's a weird hobby and we uh, so I canceled but he when we were talking we were excited about it he showed me pictures very pretty I'm like alright let's go out he's like alright take her to the movies she loves the movies so I'm like alright cool let's go to the movies and he's like alright we'll just make sure you do one thing I'm like what and he goes the popcorn trick. Like, just like that. He said, well, if you guys know what that is, you're awful. I'm gonna say that right now. If you don't, I'm gonna explain to you the same thing he said to me, which was the most disgusting thing in the world. He's like, that's when a guy takes his dick, and I'm like, that's never a great way to start a sentence dude, at all. And he's like, he sticks it into a bag of popcorn from the bottom. And then when she tries to grab some of that popcorn, <laughs> I'm like, what? Surprise sexual assault? Is that what you're going for? Like on your first date? No way. There's too many problems, right? You have too many. First problem, you walk in, you're like, can I get a large, small popcorn, please? Like you got to bring it down. Like how long's the movie? He appreciated it more than you guys. So. Secondly, what kind of a lady eats an entire bag of popcorn by herself? I'm not gonna have any of it. Like I, I know what's at the bottom of that bag, right? Like you can't be surprised by your own penis. That's rule number one. When you get one, you can't be like, I don't even know what that is. That's ridiculous. And the other thing is, I don't know what you like. How do you expect them to react? How do they eat their popcorn? That's a big thing. Hopefully, delicately, like there's something important in there for you. You know. Because otherwise, like, do me a favor, Arthur. Can you? Well, actually, I'll just do it for you. You know what it's what it is. It's, what? You call it Colonel Angus. Colonel, oh, Colonel <laughs> Angus. That's good. Sorry, Angus. Sorry, 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 sorry. Cause here's the thing: when you grab popcorn, you start off just like, like one at a time, and then it just becomes like, oh no. So I don't want her to get at this level. <laughs> And just going for it. Because I'm not, like, excited, like, the entire time watching a Disney movie. Like, it's gross. <laughs> and I asked him, I'm like, what's the point of this? And he's like, well, you're hoping for a hand job. He's like, you're hoping for a hand You don't hope for a hand You settle for a hand job, but you don't, like, cross your fingers for a hand job. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just don't know what you expect someone to do if they make that discovery do you think they're gonna be like super excited no they're not gonna like we expect them to just be like okay thanks let's get it going let's grab some of this popcorn what what, a, what is this oh my god it's been a dick in my food for 45 minutes well, I guess I better reward that behavior. <laughs> oh, no way. There's no possible way. Anyone in a any planet would ever do that. You know why? Have you ever seen how mad someone gets? Like when they get a hair in their food? Just a hair? Now imagine a penis with a bunch of those around it. It's not going to be better at all. And that's been my time. Thank you guys very much. That's been very fun. Yeah, we're Gary, everybody. Thank you. Guys. Give it up for Jack's dad. Yeah. Uh, Give it up for our lovely audience. Yeah. Jim in the booth, Mark B for teaching me about bees. Um, right? Yeah. Thank you guys so much, and we'll be back next month, and we'll see you in Seattle. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Right, now mill about, mill about, mill about, mill about. On tonight's broadcast of the Othi Schwering Show, you heard music from 650 North, U.S. Army Blues, Mathletes, Alex Barroza, Pixt, Star Shrek. 
We'll be back next month with another show. Until then, thank you, Chicago. Congratulations, Radio Dead Air, on 15 years. And good night, Milwaukee, wherever you are. Oink show.com. <laughs>